The title is Game Changing Technology and Mind Blowing Advances on the Horizon. This is extra incentive to take care of yourself today because Dr. David Hasse is going to tell us some of the things that could be game changers and human lifespan may be a completely different ball game where we live much longer than we think we can today. So uh, this, was, this is the mind-blowing stuff. I'm excited about this. EO member, Dr. David Hasse, he's the third member of that triumvirate that I told you that I was so impressed by. And I think you've already seen why you've been impressed by the, other, the first two. You're going to be just as impressed with David. He's a, he's, a, he's a Vanderbilt Mayo Clinic, double board certified, very curious physician. In 2003, Dr. Hasse founded the Maxwell Clinic to be a living laboratory to explore the question, what creates health? And he's, he's been incessantly innovating in the fields of nutrition, genomics, systems biology, aspheris, aspheris, brain performance, and regenerative medicine ever since. He's the author of Curiosity Heals the Human, Solving the Unsolvable with Better Questions and Advanced Technologies. Dr. David Hasse, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you, David. This has been, how have you all felt about today so far? Right? I mean, it, it, it's a, it, I have gotten a lot from it. And I mean, it, and it's great to do this together, right? As EO, one of the most important things that happens is that we have community. We have people that we can show up in. And I love the decision uh, uh, meditation. I was powerful. Um, I would encourage you that if you have made a decision that you share it quickly. Share it, pop it on your forum. I don't know if you use Slack or, you know, make this EO confidential. Maybe something that people can support you on in this journey. That's what we're here for. That's what we're about. And um, so it's great to get to be here with all of you. Um, I see a brain up here. Now, I'm a brain-centric clinician. Uh, I really think the brain is at the center of it all. And I was jealous up here uh, <laughs> with, with uh, Brian and Doug talking about the spiritual and the, the uh, feelings and the, the, the meaning and purpose and all this because, oh, that's so where it's at. If you, if you aren't aligned in that space, you have a really big challenge, right? And then this brain exists inside a body. And the body and the biochemistry and the environment that that body lives in and the relationships that body and mind has with other body minds and the, uh, the wholeness of ourselves as a system is what we bring out into the world. And everything matters in a way, right? And, and the weak point in your system, why this brain looks like kind of a tensegrity or a or a, a, you know, a bunch of connect, connections because the brain keeps reminding me how connected we are, how everything is connected, and how we have so much potential for healing inside of us. So before we dive into this, I'd ask you all to stand up for a second. All right, we're getting close to lunch. You might feel some yummy yummies coming in your stomach. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like you to put your hands out here and start shaking them back and forth, shaking them back and forth, shaking them back and forth. Okay, all right, getting them vibrating. Now, I want you to start bouncing up and down your heels, bouncing up and down your heels, bouncing up and down your heels. Okay, all right. Now, turn your head around, turn your head around, rotate. Keep, keep shaking your hands. Come on, you can do two things. Okay, pat your head, rub your tummy, you know, whatever you got to do, whatever you got to do. Okay, and that, what's going to happen here is that you keep bouncing, keep bouncing. I can, I, I just don't want to, I just don't want to make the stage rumble. <laughs> All right, what you're doing is you are creating what major neurotransmitter right now? Serotonin. Serotonin gets made with motion, folks. And so when you're feeling a little down, there's nothing like, Ooh, shake it off, right? Make it happen. Ooh. All right, good. I want to just all be in the, in the happy, feel-good groove as we're going to kind of go into the, this new and cool stuff. Now, um, a little bit about me, because I think context is always more important than content. I just want you to let you know who I am and kind of where I came from. Came up in a little farm in South Dakota. I'm a farm boy, milk cows, did, milk, did everything. Took over the farm from my dad when I was in eighth grade, and that kind of pushed me into knowing what an entrepreneur was. <laughs> and then uh, went on to Vanderbilt for medical school, Mayo Clinic for residency. I, even there, I recognized that 
we're naming and blaming diseases were not enough, and I started searching out holistic medicine. I became the first in the first class of board-certified holistic medicine physicians. Um, became a certified nutritional specialist back in 1999. I helped start the Institute for Functional Medicine, and I teach for there. Taught about 10,000 clinicians over the course of years. Uh, we started Maxwell Clinic in 2003. I got very entranced with neurofeedback. We've been doing that for about 15 years because learning is how we get out of almost every problem. We learn our way out of our problem. And the brain has an amazing capacity to learn. Um, and then the American Board of Integrative Medicine was formed, so I'm certified there. And, and now the American side for apheresis medicine. That was the word that was kind of like, you know, you can't be taken seriously if you can't put a one word in your bio people can't pronounce, right? So anyway, but that's, that's the science of how do you take fluid out of a body, do something with it, and put something back in the body. And um, our, 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 we have a clinic and a quality longevity research center. So we have uh, four clinical trials going on right now, all centered around longevity, especially brain performance and how age affects a lot of the underlying causes of illness. Um, please, and I'll put a shameless plug in here for if any of you is interested in Alzheimer's, if somebody has a, um, a family member that is having uh, mental challenges, we're enrolling for an amazing trial right now. People essentially get like $70,000 of free care to, to reverse, the, reverse the underlying causes of cognitive decline. It's a, an amazing, well-funded, randomized, controlled study uh, looking at a precision medicine approach to reversing cognitive decline, and we're actively recruiting right now. Um, so just want to put that little plug out there. Uh, we just got to go to a funeral. For a 101-year-old friend, this is, this is Mrs. Gaines. Mrs. Gaines lived 101 years old, and she lived independently, doing everything for herself, cooking, cleaning, until a week before she died. How's that, huh? I think this is a good, yeah, give me a yee, give me a yee-haw, Mrs. Gaines. Mm. Because her funeral was just this beautiful celebration. It was like, yep, yeah, well, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think it's important to set with a positive set point because when we start talking about aging, do you, does it, what does that word feel like to you, right? Emotions have a big play on if we're, what we're going to do about a topic. Sometimes if we have a negative association with the word, we're immediately going to withdraw from it. We're going to pull up our psychological defenses. We're going to go into denial. We're going to go into distorting and all those other things. So it's important to remember Mrs. Gaines, right? Think of, uh, and, and Aaron, you made such a great comment. Man, I've, mm, the, that w it's really about purpose, right? We need to have uh, th that life and, and aging well has so much to do with what we have to live for. And, and I want to make certain that we don't fit, forget that. But the way we see aging oftentimes is that it's like running up a sand dune. And if you ever run up a really steep sand dune, it's easy on the bottom, you can run, and you start getting up a little further, and every foothold starts to slip a little bit more. And you have to start running faster and faster just to stay in place. And that becomes a real challenge. The older we get, the less kind of innate health we create from the inside out. And the efforting of that can really be substantial. So it's important to be courageous as we start to approach these things. But there's no better time to actually be alive if what you want to do is live long and well. Um, it is just an amazing space. Aging is the number one underlying cause of death. I know it kind of sounds, I know, right? Right? So my case is, my case is solved. But, but it's interesting, we don't age the same. Biological aging is very different than chronologic aging. Now, at some point in time, you're, we're no, none of us are going to escape death, okay? And, um, but when is that going to happen for us? So as we start thinking about death, let's think about the opposite for a second and reframe this because how do you, how do you understand health? We understand health as Maxwell or maximum wellness and that anything less than that, what's the first thing that starts to happen? on the downhill trend. 
you start getting silent dysfunction. But that silent dysfunction starts inside your cells. And then a few cells start to dysfunction together, and then that silent dysfunction happens in your tissues. And then that silent dysfunction happens in your organs. And then finally it happens in your organ systems and as an organism, as a whole person. And when can you feel symptoms? When the whole system is recognizing something's wrong. So the next stage is now you get symptomatic dysfunction. So a symptom is a late stage problem, right? And so, and then we start getting diagnosed with diseases, and then we get degeneration, and then we get disability, and finally on to death. And the good news is that until you're dead, until you're dead, we have this ability to go back up the chain. Our body is designed to heal. Our body is designed to actually build. And this is, and when you're thinking about, and there's going to be way too many new and cool things to talk about today. <laughs> There are so many new and cool things. I mean, I could go up here for a month, a month of lectures all day long and not get to cover them all. That's what's so exciting about it. But it, we have never been a better time to be seeking out a better life course. Whenever I'm thinking about a problem, I want to have a framework. And um, I think uh, th there's an important way to say, how do you nurture health? How do you create health? Um, well. It was said earlier that the first step is imagination, right? So I say we need to reimagine. This is, let me ask you a question. What, how old do you want to be when you die? Got a piece of paper and pen? Go ahead, write that number down. How old do you want to be when you die? Okay, and a number popped up for most of you, right? Now, how do you want to feel that, how do you want to feel in the year before that number? Do you, do you want to have... You know, do you want your mind working well, right? Do you want your body feeling good? Do you want uh, maybe the ability to uh, learn new things? Do you want the ability to contribute in the world? Want to maybe have a little sex? <laughs> you know, do you want to travel, right? Okay, if you have all of that, if that's the day, if that's what you want, would you want another year, right? Would you want another year? You, almost everybody, yep, I'd like another year of that. That's great. So it's your life quality which really determines how many, what your number is. And I would encourage you to, and if there is a great book called My Plan to Living to 156, written by Dan Sullivan, who's the founder of Strategic Coach. And I would really encourage you all to get, you can get it for free on their website. Go to strategiccoach.com. I'm not f affiliated, except I am a member of Strategic Coach. And uh, you can download this book, and it will take you through a thought experiment that will help you create a bigger future for yourself. It is one of the most powerful interventions that you can do. And it's going to be powerful for your business as well, because it's going to supercharge your interest in what you're doing, or it's going to supercharge your interest in getting out of what you're doing. <laughs> so so start, you have to first start imagining, reimagine. Then you want to reveal your present reality. These are the lab tests. These are getting the brain map done, getting cognitive testing done, getting a host of laboratory tests. As Doug said, he, he was chuckling about seeing somebody and saying that they are all saying, hey, we're going to do a comprehensive lab panel. We're going to do it all. I'm going to tell you what, anybody tells you that, they're full of BS. <laughs> all right, we have over 55 lab companies that we work with at the clinic. And if we drew, did everything that every one of those labs did, we would have drawn all your blood off four times over. <laughs> Okay, nobody can ever give you a complete evaluation. It always has to be targeted. And, you know, there's, you don't have enough bodily fluids to test everything at this point in time with technology. So um, it's important to really think about how, what do you do, but go seek it out. Look for the important things, get it revealed. Then figure out what you're missing that's good and start systematically adding it in. Write it down, make a plan. What habit stack would you need for your day to replete regenerative things? And then you want to think, what are the things that are breaking me down? Let's, let's remove degenerative forces. And then we think about dysfunctional patterns. Sometimes people have had a head injury. Some people have, and they actually need retraining of their brain waves. Some people are stuck in a metabolic pattern of insulin resistance. There's, they are actually, uh, uh, Leah talked about the allostatic load getting caught in a pattern. Um, then, if there's something that is damaged, 
How do I repair it? Repair is very important. Um, then, when you're done that, you reassess where you are, and you refine the process and do it all again. It's a great framework. Okay, so new and cool. These are all the current, these are the top current targets for age reversal therapeutics. I know, I'm sorry. I, I was thinking I, I can go like through 12 slides of a list of all these things. But the field is massive. I sit at, on a senior advisory level for about five different companies associated with longevity, and, and the amount of movement here is incredible. So what I decided to do today is to talk about some things we're doing, uh, and then just leave as much time for questions as possible because this field is massive, and I think it's really important to see what you want to understand. But one thing we haven't talked about is how do you measure aging, right? So there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, uh, there's places you can get the standard blood lab done and, you know, get a, uh, a score for how old you are. Um, and there you can do VO2 max testing. You can compare your sense of age populations. I really like uh, this company, True Diagnostic, and, um, uh, and, and I am on their advisory board, but I'm not compensated for that. It's a volunteer thing, so I'm not, I'm not trying to plug the company per se. Um, but I am plugging this idea. This is... A, um, uh, this is an epigenetic or a methylation test to figure out how old you are biologically. And they have gone through great lengths and cross-correlated with so many different uh, standardized groupings of individuals of, of certain age. So they have tracked how, a, how old a heart is, how old eyes are, how old a muscle strength is, and cross-correlated against this 900,000 marker methylation epigenetic profile. And, and by doing that panel, they can actually tell you how high your C-reactive protein, how high your inflammation is by what's going on in your methylation. They can, and it's, it's incredible amount of large data as it's applied. But, you know, if you see a 60-year-old, they could look like a 40-year-old or they could look like an 80-year-old on the outside, right? So how old are you on the inside? And there's many different metrics and ways to understand. Steve Horvath from the University of uh, San Diego started this with his age clock and grim age. There's a whole bunch of these tests out here, but arguably this is the best one. Uh, are you, any of you familiar with Brian Johnson? Uh, Brian Johnson was, is an absolute maniac in the longevity space. He has basically you know, attributed two to three million dollars a year to reversing his biologic age back to 18 years of age. And, and he has done every therapy under the sun. And so he created a, the uh, Longevity Olympics. And, there, and he uses their testing. So he did plenty of money. You know, he's a billionaire from the tech world and has been able to assess independently. He actually has his own company that does this methylation testing. And he chose True Diagnostics. So you can look them up online and, and get, a, get a test if you like. Aging. Uh, Aging is incredibly complex. There used to be, here are the five causes of aging, here are the 19, or not nine causes, the 14 causes of aging. Now we're up to 19 underlying principles of aging. It keeps rolling forward. Um, and aging is very much like dementia. Uh, in the Evan Thea trial, the trial I mentioned about uh, reversing cognitive decline, these are the major categories that we're looking at trying to understand aging and doing a, a very comprehensive assessment of individuals and personalizing their therapy. But what's so interesting is when we look at all of the, the fundamental causes of aging, they're the fundamental causes of dementia, just restated in that way. So dementia is really an accelerated aging of the brain. You know, frailty is an accelerated aging of the body. And, and it starts, almost always starts by this uh, damage of the molecules um, the genetics start to shift, telomeres start to get shorter, you start getting different methylation patterns in the DNA, um, and the, the damage, the molecules start to get damaged. And that primary damage then becomes, causes the body to respond to the damage. And now the response to the damage, uh, like the barriers start to break up, leaky gut, leaky brain, the inflammasome activates, which is creates inflammation in a feed-forward process. Dysregulated nutrient sensing, that's a fancy word for like insulin resistance, but guess what? The, the inability to kind of use glucose 
is very much like the inability to use many nutrients in the body. The body just doesn't start using the nutrients that's coming to it in the way that it needs to. Um, you get mitochondrial dysfunction, and then cellular senescence. Uh, we call them zombie cells start to appear. And a zombie cell is a cell, a, a pathway when the cell is injured, it goes down this pathway, go like, oh, I'm just gonna kinda hang out here, dudes, instead of becoming a cancerous cell or instead of dying. It's kind of in between death and cancer. And, and those senescent cells, those zombie cells, like a good old zombie, you know, you don't want them to bite you, right? You know what happens when a zombie bites you, right? And so they, 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 and the <laughs> and that zombie saliva, though we call those senescence factors, and they circle around the body and tell all the other cells, you know what, maybe you should just sit back and not do your job. Why don't you just do like me and be a zombie for a while and be a freeloader? Um, so that starts to happen. And then now you've got all those problems going on, and then those cascade onto other problems. Now you start losing stem cell numbers. Those start to decline. And then the cells don't talk to each other as efficiently as they need to talk to each other. So hormones don't get secreted well, and they don't, uh, the messages don't receive well. Then finally, atrophy. The body starts to shrink. The cells start to shrink. And muscles start to shrink, you know. Uh, you know, we make this big deal about muscle mass being uh, an incredible marker of aging. Well, that could be making muscle as protective against aging. Activity and exercise are huge. But it's all these other causes setting up that cause a chemical reaction called, you know, um, cachexia, where the, the muscles and tissue just start to degrade and kind of evaporate. Um, that's atrophy. So exercise absolutely helps, but exercise without looking at everything above that line, eh, you know, and just having more and more protein, eh, um, not really necessarily the answer to everything. And then you get extracellular matrix stiffening. Have any of you stiffened up a bit over the years? Right? Right? And remember, I said it starts, at, it starts at cellular dysfunction, tissue dysfunction, organ dysfunction, and then you finally, well, if you're feeling the, st the stiffening, now you can look back and you go like, oh, crap, <laughs> I can feel stiff. That means that I have cells that are stiff, and those cells aren't, aren't able to be as flexible and do the job that they needed to. And then the microbiome, this incredible internal universe that lives in us, pumping out signals that lets us, tells us how to create health and has this interplay with our body, that starts to change as we age. And then, and this, then all these things together start to cause feed-forward system decay. And I want you to think about this in terms of your businesses, right? There are some fundamental things that just need to go right every day, right? And they're not sexy, but they have to get done right every day. If they don't get right every day, then you have to start doing compensatory activities to make up for those things. And then that robs you from doing your actual work and getting that done. And then if enough of those com compensations start working together, now you start getting erosion of the organization as a whole and, and a loss of component. And then that leads to bankruptcy, et cetera. But really, it does, it's useful to start putting that context to think Always going upstream to the, the most upstream things uh, helps. So Einstein was famous for saying, the way we see the problem is the problem. Uh, and I want today, after today, I want you all to see stem cells. I want you to see stem cells. When you look at somebody, you're like, wow, that's an amazing collection of stem cells they got there. <laughs> right? They got amazing stem cells because they're keeping that person repaired all the time. And where this came out for me was this amazing study called parabiosis. Parabiosis is um, a, a study that's been replicated many different times uh, in many different places, a solid, solid, solid science. They took an old mouse and a young mouse that were clones of each other, and they sewed them together by their little bellies and on, the, on the side. And those poor two little critters had to run around the cage together, you know, attached to each other. And, but an amazing thing happened. In about a week, that old mouse started to turn young. And the young mouse kind of got offended, <laughs> cellularly offended, by being attached to old. 
Um, and, and then what happened over the course of time is, um, is that there was a huge amount of healing that started to take place. Um, the muscle started to get stronger. The liver repaired. The, I'll go through the whole list of things that happened, but that old mouse started to turn young when it got to share a circulation with the young mouse. This was because that old mouse's stem cells that live everywhere in your tissue, you cut your hand, what happens is the stem cells or progenitor cells really in that area get activated and they, just, and they say, oh, uh, we need to start doing the job of repair. If you run out of those cells, and this is what happens over the course of our lifetime, these are the relative amount of stem cells in the body from a new, newborn going to the age of 80. So the number of resident stem cells in our tissue declines. You know, when a, a little baby gets injured or something like that, or who comes out the birth canal? Like, would you want to do that when you're 30? <laughs> ah, I mean, can you imagine recovering from that? You know, <laughs> but babies just boing because they have all these stem cells everywhere, and they're, they're, they're made for repair. And, and so, the, but your stem cells are amazing. Even an individual who's 85, 100 years old, their stem cells can behave like they're 30 years old if they are in a young environment. The environment is what determines the function of the stem cell, okay? So for a moment, I just want to make sure that all the things that we've talked about before this matter. I'm giving you a fundamental organizing principle for why should we eat clean? Why should we exercise? Why should we breathe clean air? Why do we want to make sure we treat our sleep apnea so we got oxygen? Why do we want to have wholesome relationships? Why do we want our stress down? We need a really beautiful habitat for these magical stem cells that live inside of us. Does that make sense? So I want you to have a little love affair with those stem cells of yours. If you're, 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 you're a meditator or anything like that, you know, say some, say some good words to them. You know, um, you know they're, they're, there to help you. they're there to take care of you. And so if you improve the niche, if you improve the habitat, you start getting more, more regeneration than degeneration. And as we get older, we have more debris that builds up in between our cells. We have oxidized molecules. We have inflammatory cytokines. Remember that zombie spit, right? That starts to accumulate, and that affects the resident uh, progenitor stem cells, and they can't do the job of healing that they were designed to do. So, now, if we want to slow down aging of this niche, then we, and slow down, we slow down the stem cell aging, we can increase tissue regeneration across the body and therefore slow the tissue and organismal aging. Now, uh, this cause in mice, this has been proven, but in uh, muscle, faster injury recovery. Blood vessels, more blood vessels, more healing. In the liver, uh, reversal of fatty liver disease, fast, faster liver injury. Brain, new neurogenesis occurs, better memory on testing. In the immune system, uh, younger phenotype, so the T cells and B cells start working better. The skin, bone, and connective tissue start acting younger. Osteoporosis is reversed. And DNA repair is accelerated. This is all by getting attached to a young mouse. So we decided to test this. We decided to do this in humans. Now, it was tough to find sort of baby clones of people. Right? It was just a, no, but we, <laughs> but we decided to test this as much as we possibly could because the, the habitat matters. So the old and dirty plasma, it turns out, makes old stem cells act old. If you put old stem cells in a young habitat, they will behave young. And um, plasma exchange is a way that we can do that. And I think Betty White has already shown us this. Do you know what Betty White's secret was? Why did she look so young and vibrant so long time? It was her habitat. <laughs> you know, it, if you're having problems, check out your habitat. So um, Maxwell Hope, this is habitat optimizing plasma exchange where you have the body, you put a big IV in one arm, old blood comes out. It goes into our apheresis device, which is a continually circulating uh, centrifuge. You remove the old plasma. 
and then the red, white, and blood cells and everything get kept. That gets mixed with clean replacement fluid, albumin, immunoglobulins, and then this customized habitat support that we've created according to that individual person. Um, and uh, we have our own, then that's all combined and everything goes back in, that's a continuous circuit. So uh, typically a guy like me, uh, we'd remove about three and a half liters of plasma in a sitting. So by the end of that time, we have uh, done the equivalent of removing all the, the plasma, I, the equivalent of all the plasma I started with. And what happens is you've cleaned the blood and you've created this massive new signal. So you, the resident stem cells have an opportunity to act differently in that way. So that's all a great idea, right? Um, there's, there was a big study done on Alzheimer's. So if, you, if you're improving the stem cells, if you're improving the function of the body, and we know that dementia is so close to aging, what would happen if we did this study in somebody who had dementia? Well, it turns out that if you do repeated plasma exchanges on somebody who has dementia compared to placebo, they have a 61% less um, decline over 14 months. Now, the new drug that was just uh, uh, released um, has uh, at most approximately a 25% less decline over 18 months. So this is a, this is a, a meaningful effect size. Um, and, and so plasma exchange, we've already shown, shown that it can reverse uh, the con cognitive problems of Alzheimer's. This is a, something called the ADS-CGI. Uh, this is a cognitive test. And we see the blue line, that's placebo. And the red line is the, is the people who got plasma exchange. And the individuals that, if we, I'm looking at the big circle, shows people who have moderate Alzheimer's disease. Moderate means that they can't remember any family members' names any longer. Uh, there's nothing moderate about moderate Alzheimer's disease in a human sense. Only doctors would call it that. <laughs> um, but uh, in mild Alzheimer's disease, not only did they not have this slow worsening, there was actual improvement compared to when it when started 14 months earlier. This is unbelievable results. And, and what's very important to recognize is so that the earlier we start, and this is very important, as it, and I'm giving this as an analogy for aging, the earlier you start, the more effect you're going to have the more bang you're gonna get for your buck, for your time, your money, your effort, your energy that you put into this process. So today's a good day, right? Today is a good day. And, um, but in the plasma exchange world, the earlier we can start in cognitive decline, the more benefit we can get. This is grandpa. Everybody knows him as grandpa. And grandpa is very happy to have his picture in this presentation. Uh, because grandpa got discharged from memory care, back to assisted living, and 91 years old. And um, so the ability of our body to heal is profound. It, we, and we have to start changing our mindset. Right now, we're stuck in denial because we believe there's nothing that can be done. And if truly nothing can be done, denial is rational. Is that fair? Right? Just like, you know, all right. Nothing can be done, all right, well, I'm just going to go about my life. But if something can be done, it's, it takes a lot of bravery to shift from a set point of, from denial into hope. And that's, that is actually, I think, our biggest challenge when addressing aging, when addressing dementia. How do we help individuals, our, our friends, our family, um, ourselves, get over the denial part? The, they're like, oh, I don't want to be disappointed, right? Like... Um, what if I don't live to 156, right? Well, I'm not going to be around. I don't have to worry, right? <laughs> How would I be disappointed? I'd be dead. <laughs> no, but, but in this, this framework of, anyway, it's, it, it takes bravery to start looking at this. We, know, we, know, we knew this, that plasma exchange can reverse this methylation genetic, sometimes up to six years uh, in a single plasma exchange. But... Um, and why does it do that? Here are these fundamental underlying causes of aging. I'm not going to bore you with all of the uh, components again. But each one of these things, from macular molecular damage to epigenetic alterations to dysregulated nutrient sensing to mitochondrial dysfunction, they all have ways to address these things. Okay? 
This is where the specialty of longevity medicine is very complex if you're going to start looking at underlying causes, but it's really cool. And the highlight is just showing that what does this regenerative plasma exchange address? And that's one of the things, if you change the habitat, if you change the habitat, you change everything about what's living in that habitat, which has to be your, happens to be your own cells. So again, great living, clean living, eating clean, exercising, breathing clean air, that's affecting your habitat. You, what you do matters. You have so much influence over your destiny. So don't, you know, even if you're not doing plasma exchange, know that you are the, you are the controller, or you're, at least you can influence highly your habitat. So I gave you all this to show you something. You guys are the first people in the world who are gonna get to see the next slides. And I'm gonna ask a favor, please don't take any pictures of these next slides, okay? This is embargoed information uh, from a clinical study, and this is the most advanced study in longevity uh, on the planet Earth right now. And I'm giving you a sneak peek with a, with a can we do an EO pinky promise on that one? All right, thank you. And, um, and so this is a multi-omic evaluation. So we started looking at metabolomics, transcriptomics, proteomics. Uh, we did echocardiograms, we did ocular scans, we did body composition analysis, we did neurologic testing, neurocognitive testing, and to see what different routes of plasma exchange, what would it do in a human, right? Does this really work? Great, does amazing things for mice, but what happens in a human? And I want to introduce you to something called the transcriptome. I'm not going to go through all of that data. Have any of you heard of the transcriptome? This is so interesting and useful. You're going to hear a lot about transcriptome in the future. So you have your genome, which is your DNA. Your DNA is, is like the master blueprint that's hitting in, in master blueprint, right? And everything that you want to know is in that master blueprint. But you don't take the master blueprint to every job site, right? So you, take, you come and make a small copy of it, and that would be a transcript of it. That's RNA. And the RNA is the copy. And then that goes to the job site, which is called the ribosome. And that copy goes in the machine, and a bunch of amino acids come, and that RNA then makes protein. That's your, trans, that's, that's your proteome. And then the protein are the machines that does the work of life, right? So DNA, RNA, protein. We're measuring RNA. That's, if we measure all the RNA, that's called a transcript ohm. Ohm means everything, right? And so we're measuring the transcriptome inside a single cell. We're taking each individual cell and measuring all of the RNA in that one cell and then doing large data analysis to figure out which DNA is turned on. This is the key to understanding life, I think. Because if we know which DNA is turned on, we then know, okay, what proteins are gonna be made and what's the possibility of that cell happening, all right? Profound stuff. But we don't just do it for one cell, we do it for about 500,000 to a million cells for every sample that we do. And the data that's there is really uh, getting close to the size of the Library of Congress with one blood draw. So it's a huge amount of data. And, but anyway, that's the transcriptome. So this is a map of the different type of white blood cells that are in the body. And these white blood cells are, they, they're each, this is, we've been able to differentiate them just based about what RNA is in them. And then we did multiple rounds of plasma exchange during our, using our method. And, the, and we compared the RNA patterns like, if cells are young, you took cells from young people, they act blue. If you take cells from old people, they act the color red on here. And what we've been able to show is that this massive transformation of, of basically kind of in the middle, white, towards blue with repeated plasma exchanges. Literally changing cellular behavior of almost every cell in the immune system towards a younger behavior. And if we can change the immune system age, we can change a whole host of, of disease processes that go on. And then, and, so, and likewise here, so each individual line is a specific subtype of a cell. And then this is a heat map that shows the darker the color, the more we're affecting that particular gene cassette. These are crazy effect sizes 
of making a big difference in inflammation, apoptosis, migration. All of these are big words that say healing in a specified way. So, um, so anyway, all right, you can take pictures or do whatever you want after this, but so thank you for that. I really want to show it to you. It gives me chills, all right? I have been working on this project for like seven years, and to get to see this high quality of data and to get to see that, yeah, yeah, this is working. There's no question that on the cellular side, you know, I went about that whole thing, at cellular dysfunction, we're reversing cellular dysfunction. Now, it takes a while for cells that are functioning well to then trickle down to make tissues that are healing well and organs that are healing well, feeling well and organism that's feeling well. So how well healthy your cells are may not correspond to how good your body feels for quite some time. Does that make sense? But you have to look at underlying causes before you get there. So anyway, a, a short word about stem cells. Uh, a lot of stem cell therapies are out there. There's two major stem cell therapies that exist. There's allogeneic and, uh, and, oh my gosh, look at my slide, it's terrible. <laughs> I, I messed, messed it up. My slide, it should, should say allogenic, which means allogenic means from somebody else. Or autologous. The other one's supposed to say autologos. Uh, you're basically self-word. And autologos. And, and cells that come from yourself aren't going to have an immune reaction. You're not going to have an immune reaction against Cells that come from somebody else, there's a potential because that they come with DNA that is not you. And our immune systems are very good at picking out things that aren't us. And, and so I think, you know, a lot of people have derided the FDA about being overly cautious and they're holding us back, et cetera. There's some dangers in bringing another human cells into your body, even if those come from a placenta, even if those come from there. And so... We're, and the long-term monitoring of that has not been really great because we have stifled the science. So um, this is uh, my friend Gustavo Moviglia. <laughs> and Gustavo, MD, PhD, and he has been doing stem cell work for 30 years uh, in Argentina. He is a brilliant and incredibly kind human being. And he does look a little like Mr. Magoo, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and, and um, this is one of our patients that we have uh, collaborated on that uh, has a progressive ALS. And, and he is actually doing an amazing uh, autologous, meaning taking cells from the body and then reprogramming them in a way that causes tissue healing to occur. He's got a series of 12 patients that are um, actually have uh, with paraplegia and quadriplegia uh, that are now walking with canes after three years of his therapy plus walkers. The amount of capacity that our body has for healing is unbelievable. We have to get out of yeah. That's That's him. That's, that's him. And so we have to get out of our mindset, and we call this the... Uh, maxillotal autologous tissue regeneration. So, and, and I just want to say, put, come back to this absolute leaderboard, you know, and Brian Johnson. Uh, Brian Johnson, uh, he came in six in this uh, worldwide uh, longevity contest to see who, is, who had the most improvement in their youthification. Uh, and Dan Sullivan got number one. So <laughs> he was very proud of this, and he's very happy about that. And we were very proud to help him get there. Uh, he, he, Dan has been an incredible mentor. Uh, strategic coach, for me, has been transformative. It's a, it's a place where you think about your thinking as an entrepreneur. And, um, and I, if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to say, again, not a paid advertisement. It's just that's kind of saved my life in many ways, like EO has. EO has given me community and, you know, and, and, and uh, a safe place, and this has helped me teach me thinking about my thinking. And one of his major things he says is you always make your future bigger than your past, right? Always make your future bigger than your past. And that is the key of where we're going, and that will give you a jet pack for your sand dune, baby. Amen. <laughs> anyway, thank you all very much. You are the solution. Thank you.